What is going on everyone? Patrick back here from Sketch Factor and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix your flat tire tubeless, non-tubeless, you know how it is. As you know here at Sketch Factor the stoke is high and my mechanic skills are mediocre so let's get into the video. I'm going to take a guess and say the reason why you guys are here is because you've got a flat tire. Wow. This could be from so many reasons though. You could have got a pinch flat, you could have not pumped up your tire enough, you could have unbeaded it while jumping something, you could have run over a nail, you could have run over glass, you could have just had somebody come and stab your tire with a nail because your friends hate you. So there's many reasons why you could have gotten a flat tire. For those of you who are unsure if you have a flat tire, this is what a flat tire looks like. Not something you want. So your first step is going to be one of two things. Bring it to a bike shop and forget about it, or do it yourself and not pay the bike shop 500. You're going to take your bike, and you're going to put it either in the stand or wherever you like choose to work on it. All right, so your first step might be very difficult, but you got to take the tire off of your bike. And you could have a through axle, you could have a quick release axle, you could have so many different things, but you got to take whatever that is out by taking unscrewing. Ready? Ready? Unscrewing the through axle. I have through axles. You gotta, you gotta pull it out. Ready? Bam. You wanna see it? See it again? All right, ready? Bam. Just like that. You gotta pull it out. And then to get the tire out, you just gotta tap, and it just falls right out. Now this tire's got a tube in it. The back tire has tubeless setup, so I'll show you how to do that as well. But first, you're gonna have to take the tire off. I know it's a stretch, but take the tire off, off of the rim. Not, not just like, don't cut it in half. Use tire levers and take it off. I'll, I'll show you. Grab the tire like this, pop the bead, which is the edge of the tire, into the center of your rim, which is this. Do that on both sides, all the way around. And then before you can do anything else, you need to unscrew this that holds it on, the valve cap. No, the valve, the nut, the screw on the, I don't know, it, this little metal screw. Save it, you'll need it later. All right, to get the tire off, you can do one of two things. You can just go like this and be strong like me, or you can go under with the tire lever, go around, Either way, it comes off pretty good. Put the rim on a nice, soft place. Now that you've taken your tire off, the tube is in here. So, you are going to mark where this thing is, which is called the valve stem is. Mark it on your tire, or just remember about where it is. So take the tube out. Once you do that, feel around the tire to see if, where the hole is and what popped your tire. Because if you put the new tube in, ready? It'll pop your tire again. It'll pop your tube or tire again if the hole is still in there. So you want to take the thing that popped your tube out so it doesn't happen again. You with me? All right. Ow. Dang, no wonder why I got a flat tire. Somebody shoved the nail on my tire. After that, you're gonna take your new tube, open the box, but before you open the box, you have to make sure it's the right size. What size? Oh, you, you don't know what wheel size you have? There's 29, there's 27.5, there's 26, there's 24, there's 20 inch, but none of those matter. I only ride 29, everything else sucks. So, if you're with me, oh, I got the wrong tube. This is my brother's tube. He rides 27.5, he's a loser. Oh, I go back to the bike shop. But wait, there's more. The width of your tires matters too. How wide your tire is. You can have 2.2, you can have 2.3, 2.35, 2.4, 2.8, you can have 3.0, you can have four inches. You get where I'm going with this, this many tire sizes. So you have to get a tire size 
like a 29 and a 2.3 that matches your tire. If you go on the side of your tire where all the writing is, wow, they want to actually tell you something with this writing. Look, it says 29 by 2.2 and it tells you the maximum you can inflate it to, which this, this one specifically is 60 feet side. So when you go to REI or your local bike shop to buy the tube, you need a 29 inch tube by 2.2 inches for the tire width. You with me? Let me say that again. This specific tire needs a 29 inch tube with a 2.2 inch width. Or just bring the tire with you if you have no clue what I'm talking about and show them and be like, I need a tube for this tire. I'm, I'm dumb, so just a tube for this tire, please. Now, if you don't want to spend any money on a new tube, you can do one of two things. You can get another flat tire, you can patch it and still get another flat tire, or you can avoid both of those two things and just go buy a new tube because they're only about $7. Unless that's gonna make you broke, then you can try the patch method and it'll work for about three weeks and then your tire will go flat again. But I will show you because I'm just that good. I'm, I'm a great YouTuber, guys. You know I am. So in order to do that, you're gonna have to spend the $6.99 on a patch kit. Wow, you could have bought a new tube by now. You're such an idiot. So you open the patch kit. You take out the patch. Still with me? And you also take out the metal file. You sand down the tube. It's like sandpaper. Sand it down, make it rough so everything sticks to it. And take off the patch. You stick it on. Hold it there for a little while. Pump up your tire again. And from three weeks from now, it'll go flat again. So you're doing this all over again, buying three more patch kits. And you could have had a new tube by now. So there you go. Once you've got your new tube, open it up, take it out of the box, make it round, and put, put like four or five pumps of air in it with, with your pump. And then it'll start, it'll look like this. Then after that, you're going to take your tire, put the tube back in before you put it on the rim. Tube in. Like I said, my mechanic skills are not great. I'm not good with tubes. Just kidding. You all thought I was telling you the truth. Alrighty. I recommend lining the valve stem up with the logo on the tire. This one's Kenda. Sometimes it's Maxxis. It could be Specialized. It could be Trex tires. It could be Schwalbe. It could be Magic Mary. It could be... I, I can go on and on about tires, but I'll, I'll save you the grief. This one's Kenda. I like Maxxis and Schwalbe. Alrighty, here comes the hardest part. You have to put the tire and the tube back on the rim. Wow. So, you're going to put this valve stem through the valve stem hole. Stay with me here. Clean off all the gunk that's on there. We are just leaking green slime. It's amazing, now it's all over the place. All right, and then this is your rotor, so you have to make sure it's on the right side. So flip it around as you're rolling forward, and then the tread will look like it rolls better one way. So obviously you're gonna make it so it rolls that way. Don't put your tire on backwards. You'll look like an idiot on the trails. And people will call you out on it. I will come personally call you out on it. Tell me where you're riding. Let me know in the comments. I will personally come call you out that your tire is on backwards. So don't do it. So once you do that, I like to use the Home Depot bucket trick. I put the rim on a Home Depot bucket and then bring the tire above it and then you can push it on the rim. It seems to work pretty well. Never had any problems with it. This might take a few minutes, but you gotta have patience. And if you don't, I will also come call you out on that. No, I'm just kidding. I won't come, I won't come call you out on it. And then this last section, take it off and then yank it this way and it should just pop right on. If it doesn't, you can all, you always have the option of using tire levers to make it a little bit easier. Now that it's on, you can do one of two things. You can pump it up first, logical, or you can put it on the bike, back on the bike first and make sure the tire's on the right way so I don't come call you out and tell you it's the wrong way. I recommend doing that first and then pumping it up later instead of having to pump it up, deflate it, re-pump it up, re-put it on the bike, so yeah. Just do what I say, I won't have to call you out on anything. All right, take your through axle from earlier. 
figure out where your brake is. This is your braking caliper. Let me, let me say that again. This is your braking caliper. If you don't know what your braking caliper is, you don't know what your braking caliper is, you're up. So you better know what your braking caliper is. This is your braking caliper. So the rotor goes in the caliper. You don't put it this way and put it on the other side. The rotor goes in the caliper. Ready? Ready? All right. So you roll it back in. Rotor in the caliper. Ready? And up. It's in there. Let me do that again. Ready? And line it up. Up and in there. You hold it up there. Slide the through axle in. Ready? Ready? Boom. Done. And you screw it back in. One more time. Boom. Done. It's in there. And you screw it in. Righty tighty, lefty loose. I obviously don't know what I'm doing here. Tight. Lock it up. Good to go. Treads the right way. Can't call you out on anything. Remember that nut we took off earlier? Don't forget to put it back on. You gotta put it back on so the valve stem doesn't go anywhere. Screw it back on. Just like so. Screw it on. Once it's screwed on, you're all set. Open the valve stem up. Go get your floor pump. And then you pump up your tire. You're riding mountain, somewhere around 20 PSI or your preferred pressure. Get your pump. Make sure you're using the pressed side. If you have a pressed tube, if you have a Schrader tube, then you gotta use the Schrader side. Or you just are a dummy if you don't know what any of this means. So, put it on the valve stem. Whatever your locking method is, then you need to pump. I don't have to pump, I just snap. And it's pumped up, see? Nice. Pumped up, I'm not lying to you, it's pumped up. So. Here, look, 20 PSI, it's all set to go. So now I'm gonna show you how to do it with tubeless tires. Make sure you close your valve stem, otherwise you'll lose all the air and you'll think you'll have another flat tire and you'll go through this whole process again, which you don't really wanna do because you'll have to watch me, you'll have to watch this video again. And you don't wanna watch this video again unless you love hearing my voice and you could, could subscribe down below to get more videos. <laughs> gotcha. Ready for the tubeless tires, we're gonna follow some of the same steps. First, you're gonna take the tire off the wheel. You're gonna take the tire off the bike, not the wheel, you're gonna take it off the bike. You're gonna remove the through axle, ready? But before we remove the through axle, you need to shift into your hardest gear. Now, what is your hardest gear? Well, it's the one closest to the frame. What's your frame? This yellow thing, the highlighter. This is the highlighter. This is your lowest gear. Your hardest gear is also your lowest gear, your smallest chain ring. Why don't you shift? Now that we're in your lowest gear, stop your tire, take it off, remove the through axle. Now that the through axle is unscrewed, pull it out. There we go, it's out. We can't just yank this tire down, we have to pull the derailleur back. Pull it back, see that again, ready? Pull it back, falls out. Now, this, this tire isn't flat, but I'm, I'm still gonna show you how to do it anyway. Just like before, you're gonna follow the same steps. You're going to pop the tire into the center, which is called the bead is going to go into the center of the rim. Just like so. Tire's on there good. It'll pop like that. Both sides. Flip it around, do it again. Yummy. Sealant. Don't let that happen. It explodes in your face. It's kind of disgusting. You can be a rich person. You can go buy a brand new tire, put it on, put new sealant in, pump it back up, and be fine. Or you can use bacon strips. To do that, I will show you. But I don't have a hole in my tire, so I'm not going to poke the hole in my tire. I will animate it. Alright, so you're going to take your bacon strips. You're going to take one out. This is a bacon strip. You're going to, you're just gonna come with a tool, this isn't a tool. You're gonna put it on just like so. And then wherever the hole is in your tire, it'll be leaking sealant so you know exactly where it is. You're going to just shove it in there. I'm not gonna shove it in there because I don't need a new hole in my tire. So, just like it, I'm gonna say that one more time. You're gonna put it on your tool that it came with. And you're going to shove it into the hole. Push hard. 
and then you're going to pull your tool back out and the bacon strips is going to stay in there. The sealant should clog it up and your tire should be fixed. After that, you're going to check your sealant level, make sure you have enough sealant to seal it back up, and then you're gonna pump. That's a real fun part. You're going to stick your tire lever in there because you don't want your hand in there this time. Grab one side of the bead like so. All the way around. So you get a little opening. After that, this is the section you flip upside down very carefully. And as you guys can see, I'll show you. I have enough sealing in there. That is more than enough sealing. I use orange seal, and you can have many different sealants. There's sand, there's slime, there's orange seal, I can go on and on and on, there's muck off. I like orange seal, personal preference. Now that your sealant level's good, put this open part to the top, and put your tire back on the bead, just like so. Now that you've made a complete disaster of your work area, you're gonna continue to make a complete disaster of your work area by pumping this up and hoping that sealant doesn't go everywhere. This is a little bit different than the front wheel because you have to have worry about the derailleur once again. So remember that smallest ring, this one way down here, you're going to put the chain, this part of the chain, the top part of the chain on that smallest ring. So you're going to line up the chain, put it on your lowest gear, boom, in. Let me show you again. Line up the chain, boom, you're good. Make sure it's all the way up there, grab your through axle shove it through, give it a nice tap. It's in there now. Screw it in. Now you're done. Hopefully you don't have to watch this video again. So, did you learn how to fix your tire? Hopefully. But if you didn't, then what did you do this whole video? Did you not pay attention at all? Come on, I showed you how to fix a tubeless tire and a tube tire. Oh well, if you didn't learn anything, just take your bike to the bike shop and pay them. It'd be like $500. They should be able to fix your bike for $500. Can we just buy, yeah, just buy a new bike. There's a solution to the flat tire, buy a new bike. But seriously, if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like down below, comment with any questions. I don't know, I'll answer them. Even if no questions do, but I need any comment is something to respond to. It's better than the zero we got on last video. That's it for Patrick's Bike Shop, otherwise, whoa. That's all for today at Patrick's Bike Shop, where the stoke is high and my mechanic skills are mediocre. So, on to the next video. I'm Patrick. Make sure you guys keep it sketchy. Thanks for watching. No, that wasn't good enough. You guys know what time it is. Yeah, it's, it's 1014. No dough. It's not 1014 there. Then Tell me what time it is in the comments then. Uh, but on a real note, guys, thank you for watching. I'm Patrick from Sketch Factor. Make sure you keep it sketchy. See you next time.